Yes, so, uh, Dr. Wang. <laughs> yes, okay, finally. This is, uh, I just uh, updated my uh, slides here. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, it's my pleasure to present a talk about the COVID-19 uh, in China's experience, including prevention, control, diagnosis, and the treatment. I will not talk about a lot, a lot about the prevention and control. I focus on the diagnosis treatment. Yes, uh, there is a key experience in the control of COVID-19. One is for the first line and for early measures and for the people by the people. It's just, we have a three key experience, key steps. For the four defense lines, first way is the line when the battle in Wuhan, Hubei, because it's a, the outbreak in Wuhan and Hubei is, a, is a spread all over the China. So first of all, we uh, stop the uh, spreading of the COVID-19 in Wuhan and Hubei, the lockdown, the city lockdown to Paris. The second line prevent the major outbreak in Beijing. Beijing is the capital, so we uh, we set the second line to prevent an outbreak in Beijing. And the third line is stop the spread of disease in the in Hubei surrounding regions, including Hunan province uh, near the Hubei. And the third, fourth line is contain the spread of the epidemics nationwide. And the early detection, early report, and the early isolation and treatment is a big issue for the control disease progression and uh, control the uh, decrease the mortality. We uh, we active all of China from the community and the people and the government. The community will engage was very seriously to check the temperature, medical observation, management, etc. And uh, the community health education, hygiene, the disinfection, public space in communities and the rural areas. So the experience in China, all the people, all the populations involved the control of the disease. The, uh, okay. We have the case reporting system. The first of the case report, the suspected, suspected case, confirmed case, and the systematic affected individuals will be called report. We report all the, the uh, uh, patients within two hours after the diagnosis. All the information will be checked by the CDC within two hours after receiving the report. And uh, we update the report. report. Once the suspect case confirmed or excludes, when clinical severity change with the progressive disease, or when status a symptomatic infected individual change to, to be a confirmed case. So we update regularly. And also we report the COVID-19 to the public health events. So this is report system. It's very important to get the case awareness by the government, by the healthcare system. The case management, including the isolation treatment. We isolate and treat all the patients at the designated hospital. For the suspect case, should be quarantined in a single room. And a confirmed case and asymptomatic infection could be isolated in the same room. So we get the temporary hospital, a covenant hospital, to management the, uh, the mild, moderate COVID-19 patients. To get the, uh, the uh, designated hospital can administrate the uh, severe and critical case to be treated in ICU and the designated hospital. Biological characteristics, including the soil infection, transmission load, and uh, the suspect of uh, population. All the COVID-19 patients, including asymptomatic patients, this is the source of the infection. 
and uh, restructuring problems and close contacts are the main roads for transmission. The aerosol transmission is possible in a relatively close environment for long-term uh, exposure. So this should be aware that the places and urine contamination can cause the aerosol of contact transmission because we can isolate the virus from the faces and the urine. All the population is susceptible for the virus from the newborn to 108 years old person. The pathogenesis, the, we have some data from the autopsy totally in China, we have 30 autopsies and uh, many biopsies. So we can collect data from pathology. The lung is, is, uh, is the main organ that's injured by the COVID-19 infection. So, you know, very deep with lung solids and the, uh, the avular Damage involved several metroid exudation and the highline membrane. And uh, also, we can find some infiltration of monocytes of lymphocyte and the regular highline lumbar. This kind of lumbar can all over the organs, different organs. So, anti uh, anti. Uh, Population treatment is very important. From the uh, pathology, we found that the bronchi was uh, filled with uh, mucus and mucus blood. This, this is a given proof that the mucus, the mucus blood can a key reason for the uh, low uh, the, for for the hypoxemia, hypoxemia. So we have to deal with it. Hello? Yes. Can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Very good. Okay. From the electronic microscope, cytoplasmic variants observed in the bronchial epithelium and the test through ambular epithelium. This slide shows some uh, figures that uh, is a kind of inflammation the process and the focus and the focal focal hemorrhage from the uh, lung and some mainline memory information and the pulmonary fibrosis. Mm -hmm. You can see vascular mainline and also the aviator expedition. This is the HEC staining and the immunohistological chemical staining. You can see the uh, tape 2 and a video that tell us about the collaboration and uh, the uh, some staining is possible for the type 2 video and the video is and the video is out in the lung. This is the electronic microscope. You can see the uh, wearing in the intercytoplasmic. This means that maybe antiviral treatment is very important. This is the person. So antiviral treatment is important even in the late stage of disease. It seems that in the lung, the virus is still there, but from the upper respiratory tract, we couldn't the, 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 the RA. There's another important uh, finding from the pathology. The, the, the immune system was suffered, mm. it's like, uh, showing that the spleen is drunk with the lymphocytopenia and the focal hemorrhage and necrotic. Also, the macrophages, the and the phagocytosis. 
the Lisbon Road, the Lisbon site is very bad. And the CDA CD4 T-cells in the reduction in Spain and the Lisbon Road. This, uh, this is a liver uh, spleen. You can see some spleen, uh, liver sites in the, and the necrosis in liver sites in the spleen and the epithelial cells in the renal, tubus, edema, and, uh, exploration. Also, you can see the lumbi in, uh, Capillary. Mm. Yes, so, this uh, disease is that many organs suffer by the COVID 19 infection, and also, but mainly it's in the lung and the immune system. This is a given period, it's uh, from 1 to 14 days, mostly 3 to 7 days. We will dry cough, fatigue is the main preventive. Others is rare, for them, for example, diarrhea, etc. If it, if it should be awareness that in severe case, the sleep dyspnea usually occur one week after the onset disease. And, uh, for the, uh, hypoxemia, it rapidly progress to saturated distress syndrome and septic shock, etc and even organ failure. The severe or critical cases, sometimes no fever or low fever. The other one, and those <coughs> underlying disease of prognosis. Pregnant women is similar to others, and the children is usually mild. This, uh, uh, it's a uh, slide show the sex and age. You can see it's most of, uh, patients is uh, more than 40 years old, 30 years old. But in the lower, it's very less in the, in, and the young people and the children as less. And this is symptoms. Most patients have fever and the dry cough and the fatigue, and the headache and the muscle and etc. And analyzing medical condition is an important issue for the for the outcome. Most of the dead people have underlying disease including hypertension, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease, the COPD, etc. So you can see this is a, the critical one. Critical, all the critical cases have underlying medical conditions. The liver test, including the routine and the biochemistry test and the other specific tests for such as mm. the dynamo and the troponin and the other PRP, LDH, etc. Liver enzyme, some, uh, increase in some patients, but not a lot. It seems it's a complication from the, uh, it's okay. it's the last I can't hear you. slide later. और अशोक वाली लास्ट स्लाइड अभी जो अशोक ने बनी तो उनको मिला के दो स्लाइड्स बना ओके okay. इजो में को मैसेज भेज देंगे कि लास्ट में हम स्लाइड्स शेयर करेंगे यस यस ओके दे बोल कि टेस्ट इंक्लूडिंग एसिड टेस्ट वेरोग आइसोलेशन Hello. Hello. This slide. Yes. It's okay now. So, the static of the ICM antibody, IgG antibody, and the antigen acid. So, this is a 
for the IDM, IDB, and the body, if that will positive from three to three, about 15 percent in five days. And in the early stage, it's very low uh, percentage. This is the information. IDB, IDB, body, and the IDM, three. You can see this IDB, IDM is a very similar profile. It's not like other acute infectious disease that IDM comes up earlier and uh, IDB late, later. It seems to be parallel. And also, the IDB is the very early stage and the risk of progression it goes down. About the two weeks later, IDB is usually negative. The PCR test, you can see here the PCR test. This, this viral shedding in uh, COVID-19 is uh, pretty longer. It starts it's even probably the three weeks and the four weeks. So it seems that the viral shedding is longer than that. Antibody uh, is a very important uh, supplementary test for uh, COVID 19. If the nuclear acid is uh, negative, we can see the serum antibody, IgG and IgA, and IgM. If the uh, if, uh, suspected case with nuclear acid negative, we check antibody. If antibody, IgM antibody, holds positive, we can diagnose it as a confirmed case. So, but IgM IgG alone couldn't to be a confirmed case diagnosis. Uh, imaging is another important technology to marker. In the early days, there's a multiple drug schedule of indications, and uh, it's better in the uh, extraneous lung, and further, the multiple glass, ground glass schedule and the filtration schedule will respond in both lungs in the, to the center. This actually, you can see in the early, uh, the infiltration schedule appears in the lung. It's near the uh, but with this progression, it goes to the center. And this is this again. It's similar to the AD, certainly with some different validation uh, and the several case. That's not this uh, criteria for COVID 19. Suspect case, including epidemiological history and uh, clinical features. History to travel the future to the academic community with important days, or in contact with where are a part of people with important days, or in contact with patients who were with cancer syndrome with important days, or cluster decay. Cluster case the definition is two or more cases with fever or with cancer syndrome. As clinical features, we were greater imaging and uh, the uh, white blood uh, new normal increase with lymphocytes increase. Lymphocytes mm -hmm. is a very important uh, sign of the uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. early stage. So if the patient is according to this, uh, any of the epidemiological features and uh, two of the clinical features are all three clinical features. You can diagnose it as a suspected case. Mm. If the suspected case is in accordance with the following uh, marker, the proper standard, you can diagnose it as confirmed case. Uh, RA positive or gene sequencing is highly uh, homologous to the novel coronavirus. Or very specific IDG, 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 I
antibody uh, positive in serum, or IgG alone detectable from the uh, negative to positive, or IgG antibody reaches titration of at least four, four times higher from the early to recovery. Mm -hmm. Single type, including mild, moderate, severe, and critical. For the mild case, only the fever of the deep, no pneumonia. Moderate is a typical one. It's a fever, resistance syndrome, it's a pneumonia. The severe case, including the shortness of breath and uh, oxygen saturation less than 33 percent and the other partial pressure oxygen to break you know to use that oxygen less than 300. Another one is the if the case this uh, chest imaging goes drive very fast or the 15 percent between 24 to 48 hours you can deal with this part patient as a severe case. And uh, patients because we do one of the following uh, uh, features, you can get a critical one. Uh, respiratory failure and a shock and the other open failure require to be cleared in ICU. This slide shows the proportion of clinical type of different diseases. In general, in China, nationwide, from the mild moderate, only about uh, 80%. And uh, some asymptomatic. And uh, for the uh, severe case, about 15%, the critical about the three. Yeah. This is Wuhan. And this is Hubei, except Wuhan. It's a similar, but in Wuhan, the severe and the, uh, and the uh, critical blood together is about 20%. It's uh, uh, the right except of Wuhan, you can see most of, about only, only 13% is the severe and the critical. This proportion is increasing with age. You can see the yellow one. It's a severe one, severe case, and the red is the critical. In the, in, the, in the children, critical and the severe is the very rare. Compared with that, in the aging people, it's the, 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 the prevalence is very high. You can see about more than 80 years old, it's about 40% patients is a severe and critical. This is why using high mortality in the old people. <coughs> Here I just show the proportion of death in different age groups. You can see the higher the age, the higher the mortality rate. The treatment for the COVID-19. Uh, in general, the rest of the mortality and the, uh, uh, is important especially the, for the oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy is a very key player in the treatment for the COVID-19. The earlier, the better. And the, the airway cleaning is another important issue. This is just our awareness of, uh, after the autopsy. This is the pathology we can see. The mucus, the mucus plug in the, yeah. in the uh, bronchi. So this is why we, we use the ventilation therapy, but didn't work. Didn't work. So the, for the sperm, sper, uh, for the mucus uh, uh, cleaning of the airway, is a very important uh, uh, strategy. Antiviral treatment. So far, there's no confirmed uh, agents to treat COVID-19. But we, we really recommend some agents, some drugs already on market to try to use to, to treat the COVID-19, including upper interferon, ribavirin, and the and uh, 
chlorine phosphate are the door and recently probably pelvic. So there are some data showing that chlorine phosphate uh, and hydrochloroquine is worked in in some study. It's promising, I think. And uh, Bobby Zaria also gave some promising data to use in COVID-19. Collateral yeah. didn't confirm so far. There are some publications showing that it didn't work well. And the Riverine, Alpha Interferon, and Abidora, there's no good study coming up. Antibiotic drug treatment. In the late stage, most COVID-19 patients will uh, co infected with bacterial fungus. But in the, in the mild, moderate case, it's very few. There's no common uh, co infection with bacterial fungus. So antibiotics mm -hmm. not the regular uh, treatment. But in, in the early stage in Wuhan, almost all the population uh, patients used antibiotics treatment. I don't think it's needed. Uh, this is uh, the uh, chloroquine phosphate clinical trial. This is a randomized controlled clinical trial uh, by UI Hospital in the early stage with multi-center single blast. You can see uh, the totally hands, uh, but uh, finally 30, 36, uh, 30, 30 patients getting enrollment. You can see this is uh, the disease exacerbation. You can see the difference between these two groups. With uh, chloroquine treatment, no one goes to uh, exacerbation of disease. Compare that mm. to placebo, mm. some case goes worse. Mm. And uh, this is a favor, you raise in a favor. Mm. You can see with the chloroquine treatment, the, uh, the shorter the fever is about uh, more than six days. Six, six days. Compared with that, it's uh, 11, uh, 13 days. So this is a, there's a significant difference. And also, local steroid intervention. Most uh, placebo control groups uh, have to use uh, steroid. But in chloroquine phosphate group, no one used uh, local steroids. So this is a significant difference. So from the pilot study showing that chloroquine is uh, promising for the treatment of chronic mm -hmm. COVID-19. Also, hydrox, hydrox, uh, hydroxychloroquine, also some uh, permit, uh, pilot study showing the promising efficacy. This is a CT scan. Oh, also, you yeah. can see improvement with the chloroquine treatment. It's a uh, improvement. It is definitely it's a uh, significant. Yes, and uh, the Fabi Plaria is also okay with some primitive data. So my recommendation is that you can try to use the chloroquine on Fabi Plaria in the treatment of for COVID-19, if you have the uh, drug available. We developed some early warning indicators for severe critical. It's an early treatment, early uh, uh, intervention to the severe uh, critical phase. Because once the disease progression to the severe critical, the outcome is worse. So we have to start treatment that the intervention earlier. If the patient has uh, the lymphocyte decrease progressively, all the uh, inflammatory factors such as the interleukin 6, CRP increasing, lactate sustain and progress, or long region development rapidly, or thermoferritin elevation, or elevation of high sensitivity cardiotropony, in this situation you have to take care of this patient very seriously to 
get the, 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 the enough treatment, the better the oxygen treatment. This slide shows the, uh, the figures showing the uh, early marker to predict the outcome. This is a publishing method from the Professor Chaobin group. Here is the, the dilemma. This is that dead people. All the dead people, you can see the increase in the dilemma. At the lower level, of the lymphocytes. Also, the interleukin 6 level increase. And uh, the severity mm -hmm. is higher compared with the survivor. And this one is uh, a top company. It's uh, increasing dramatically with the with, with, uh, uh, non survivor patients. Survivor patients, there's no increase. And here is uh, the lactate. Lactate increase dramatically with the, the non survivor and uh, decrease in survival. Mm. So all these markers yeah. to, to predict the outcome and to start the treatment intervention. For the severe critical case, we have a protocol to treat deal with the, this part patients, including the refractory support, circulating support, renal, convalescent plasma treatment, pure blood purification and um, immunotherapy and others. Uh, Receptory support oxygen therapy from different mm -hmm. situations. The nasal uh, mask or high flow nasal catheter oxygenation, non-invasive mecha mechanical ventilation or invasive mecha mechanical ventilation. <coughs> it should be very nice that mm -hmm. the, airway, the airway cleaning it's very important. Yes, use close filter suction according to the airway separation. But sometimes upper respiratory, there's no filter. Only in the lower, in the bronchi. So we have to 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 to, uh, to do the uh, kind of the uh, prong, the kind of prong position, ventilation, etc., or even the ECMO. Convalescent plasma treatment. Can you hear me? Yes? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Convalescent plasma uh, treatment. We use about uh, 600 cases so far. It, it, it's worked in, uh, in the severe and moderate cases and even some critical cases. Yeah. This is a donor, should be met the following criteria. No less than three weeks after the onset of the symptom. That means three weeks later after the onset, they have the, uh, they can donate the, the plasma. And uh, in accordance with the criteria for this isolation discharge, and uh, the age from 18 to 55 years old, and the male the weight, is not less than 50, female not less than 45, no history, bloodborne disease, such as HPV, HPV, etc. And the country not donate plasma. Okay. And uh, the indication for the convalescent plasma treatment mm -hmm. includes erratic disease progression, severe and critical illness. And the cause of illness should not exceed three weeks. The earlier the better. And the nuclear, uh, nuclear acid has this was positive or other evidence to present virus. The dose, we usually use 200 to 500 milliliters per day, per time, maybe two times or three times even. Okay, and this is another uh, agent. Yes, can you can hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Another uh, drug, Tocilizum, Tocilizum. This is kind of interleukin 6 receptor uh, inhibitor. There's no mechanism to, to block the uh, cascade of uh, interleukin 6 uh, derived uh, cascade uh, mm -hmm. release. And this is some 
basic study showing that CD4 T cells are highly active in COVID-19 patients. You can see this is severe. The red one is, is the ICU, severe. It's a red, uh, blue one is no ICU. And this, uh, the, the blood one is, uh, is the health control. You can see the, uh, the, the uh, CD8, CD68 is a low level. And even the CD38, CD44. And uh, from this summary, the, uh, the, all the, the activation of the T cell, CD4 T cell, it seems that in the, in the critical disease progression, CD4 T cell is highly activated. And also the similar thing, CD8 T cell, highly activated. With the activation, maybe you can induce the active induced cell death or apoptosis. So you can see the, uh, T cell exhaustion by the team three and the PD1 expression. With the disease progression in ICU, here is the severe case and the critical case. You can see very high expression of team three and uh, and uh, and uh, mm. PD1 mm. and the and the PD1 and uh, this is team three uh, and the PD1 expression. Mm. Both PD1 and the team three high expression mm. ICU patients, critical and severe. Okay, with no ICU and the control. So it, it, it implies that the, uh, the T cell function is exhausted. And also, in peripheral plus, uh, wow. the T cell reduction. This is a lymphocyte cytopenia. So this is uh, in accordance with the, uh, the, this study. So, uh, there's another finding, it's very interesting. The CD4 GMS TSF uh, T cells can be found in, uh, in severe case, you can see. In severe case, it's 8 to 17 percent. It's kind of GMS, GMCSF positive CD4 T cells. This is kind of the uh, inflammation uh, trigger. This is a uh, monocyte activation induce the uh, interleukin-6 secretion. So interleukin-6 so in increase. Here, as you can see, the severe case, is, uh, this is moderate case, and it has control. We do find the interleukin-6 increase in some critical and the severe case. So anti-interleukin-6 uh, uh, receptor antibody may work in COVID-19 patients. So. How many, they try uh, to use uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, antibody to treat this COVID-19. Yeah. From the pilot study, tocilizumab is effective in COVID-19 patients. So, so we use this uh, 400 milligram per time. And if, if necessary, maybe we can use another, another dose. But totally, it's not more than 800 milligram. Yeah, regular gram, regular dose is 400 milligram. Blood purification is, uh, is another strategy to, to release the cytokine strong. We know in uh, formula hepatitis, uh, uh, we, we try to use uh, blood purification, blood transfer, uh, exchange, etc. So, uh, Professor Li, academic uh, Liang Jianli, have tried many patients in Wuhan. This worked. It's uh, it's reduced the mortality. Glucose steroid is controversial. So far, it's still controversial. Some experts think it's worked in some uh, case, progressive very seriously uh, in the early stage with three for five days uh, treatment. Can, can reduce the mortality, but others note. So it's still controversial. Uh, if the patient have disease progression very seriously or this very, uh, in the very short terms, you can try to use three or five days, not very high dose. Others, including the uh, macro ideology regulator, we try all the patients in this situation to, to, to hope to, to, 
to less the co-infection of bacterial fungus. Traditional Chinese medicine, COVID-19 treatment, we try to use uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, many patients from mild, moderate, or critical, we try to use traditional Chinese medicine. It's uh, from the uh, some survey, some expertise view, it's worked. But uh, I'm not the uh, traditional Chinese uh, physician. Many we have many uh, many uh, uh, capsules, uh, granules, many uh, uh, administration uh, prescriptions. Yes. Okay. This is criteria criteria for this isolation and discharge. The temperature normal, respiratory syndrome improve. Uh, imaging a uh, various absorption and uh, two consecutive negative ICV, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, RNA test, at least uh, 24 hour interview, we can uh, the isolation discharge. But we do find some redetectable of uh, RNA. So we we uh, recommend all the patients will be not monitored at home very seriously after the discharge from hospital. Yeah, so the patients in the home at least 14 days isolation, we suggest to wear the mask, live in the well-ventilated single room if possible, reduce close contact with family member, and the separate and dining practice uh, hand hygiene and avoid going out. And we, we suggest that uh, the patient should be go back to the hospital to follow up in, in two, week, two weeks and uh, four weeks to check the uh, some biomed biochemical test, uh, blood test and uh, uh, virological test. Okay, this is uh, what my uh, presentation. Thank you for attention. You. Professor Omata has asked, first question is IgG antibody presence indicates immune or any cases with a strong positive IgG. So what is the difference between the infected and the immune using IgG? Okay. IgG includes neutralized antibody, but not all. From the, uh, from the study showing that the half, 50% IgG antibody is, neutral, is supposed to neutralize antibody. So, so if it one is to two or one is to four in the ratio it is a good neutralizing antibody hello this is dr mata how you define immune igg immune and then non-immune igg antibodies that's a very critical one and there may be the treatment by the passive transfer of the antibodies may depend upon the IgGs, which is one is immune, indicating immune, and the other is not. How do you define, how you can find out the people who carry the antibodies, IgG antibodies, antibodies and then can means the immune. What are the differences? How do you define, how do you clarify? With the IgG antibody, about 50% is the neutralized antibody. It's a protective antibody. 50%, half of it. But how you clarify? What are the distinctions? They, they, do, they, do, the, uh, they do the plaque reduction uh, test for the neutralized antibody test. That's it. Because we, we we detect the IgG antibody as a marker of neutralized antibody when we try to use 
Kamerleitung und Straßen und Friedrichs. So, Kamerleitung und Straßen und über die Leibung, we need to be higher than 600, 600 people, the titration. That's a very good news because if you have a high title of antibody, IgG antibodies, that case, not just free of the viruses, but maybe immune forever against this virus. And then title may be linked to, to it. High titles, low titles. That can be a distinction. Yes, I agree. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wang, there are many questions. Uh, I don't think you can uh, answer uh, many of them. I will just uh, use one and then I will pass on to uh, Dr. Diana. Uh, the questions from Professor Omata are four, but I am not. And there are about five questions from uh, Dr. Lau himself. Uh, one of them I think is very important. And he says, which serological tests have been approved in China and which serological test do you recommend for our people for diagnosing acute infection and diagnosing recovery from the infection? Okay. So far there are six companies approved by the FDA, Chinese FDA, mm -hmm. to contribute the IgG and IgM antibody. All these six mm -hmm. companies are similar, but a little bit different. We try to pull of them from one Wu and another from uh, Tangzhen City. We think that if IgG, IgM antibody together, can be a supplement for the diagnosis of confirmed case when, as, when RNA is a negative person. Otherwise, okay. if the patient of oh. IgG positive, we couldn't diagnose it as a confirmed case. Maybe it's a recovery case. Or uh, a symptomatic, a symptomatic infective case, but we do, we couldn't diagnose it as a confirmed case. Okay, I will like now Dr. Diana, our second moderator, and I will come in the end again to the slide. So, Diana, okay, can you ask uh, two or three questions. Okay, from the I will. Yes, yeah. I will lift it from our audience. Um, Professor Wang, uh, thank you for that very nice lecture. Everybody learned from it. Um, there is one from uh, the Philippines, uh, from Will, Dr. Willie Alba. Can you comment on the recent report of CDC corona reactivation? Is it possible, Professor? Uh, we do find uh, some patients after the discharge from hospital, we detect the RNA, but the reason we and we, we discuss a, a lot. It's not really infection. It's okay. The, uh, it's, uh, the, the level of the RNA is in the margin. So sometimes the positive, sometimes negative. Because uh, our, for either test, it's not sensitive enough. The, sensitive, the most sensitive for PCR test is the 200 copy. Less 200, 200 copy. It's undetectable. So we are developing the more sensitive PCR test now. And uh, another reason no reinfection case happened. There's a monkey, the monkey uh, experience showing that we we challenge after infected the, 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 the infected the monkey we challenge with virus. There's no at all. Oh, so, okay. So far, there's no evidence re infection of COVID 19. Okay. There are, uh, thank you, Professor. There are a lot of questions on this new drug that was published in New England Journal, Remdesivir. Do you have any experience on it in China? 
there is they reported about an 18 percent uh, mortality how about in in china do you use this drug and this severe from gilead from gilead in death severe we yes we have a little trial we have uh, uh, the, but uh, the data is not open. It uh, maybe next week we are open. We don't know. Okay. okay. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, there are about hundred more questions, and we will send it to Dr. Wang and uh, other task force members. We hope to have their replies in the next two days and they will be posted on the Apostle website. I would like to uh, go through my first slide one more time. This Apostle initiative is the initiative by all the members. We have to have six more uh, webinars and I would encourage all country colleagues, uh, physicians and surgeons together uh, we have a task force where we would have some suggestions on daily basis with Zoom meetings. We do hope that we will be able to publish some very good papers on liver and COVID. We have a research initiative. One of them is the Apcolis study, which we have planned. And I thank George for his inputs and in making this from a uh, large uh, survey into a monkey survey. The link of this will be in the next slide. And I want to thank on behalf of all my colleagues, uh, the, all my colleagues uh, about the initiatives and I uh, thank Professor Wang. Can we show the web link? Otherwise the web link will be on the Apostle website for the monkey survey. I don't want to take more time. I just want to thank my co-moderator, the excellent talk by Professor Wang, very educative, very new, uh, very helpful for us in this crisis. And I would like to thank my other colleagues in the webinar, uh, Masao, George, and Diana for joining us today. And I can see Jiaji Dong from the, the, from the chat. Uh, thank you all, and we hope to have one more session, maybe more sessions from Professor Wang in future. Thank you all for joining and giving support to the initiative of Apostle. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Izumi, for and the Apostle Secretariat. Thank you, thank you very Second much. Second round sir. of applause. Second thank round you. of applause. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Okay.